for three years, I have not mentioned this because dispensationalism, the Lord has mildly used our ministry to rescue many people from wrong doctrine. Now, there's a certain scattered group who are wrong dispensationalists, but I didn't worry too much about them because they're a very small group. However, a lot of people have been converted to the truth of dispensationalism. And it's because of that, that now what they're doing is they're typing down my name or other Bible believers with dispensation. And then by doing that, what they're going to find is they're going to find these wrong dispensationalists who are teaching heresy. Now, what you've got to understand is this. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly dividing the word of truth. That means that there is a way to wrongly divide. God put rightly divide for a reason. So just because you watch some guy online dividing the Bible, being a dispensationalist, that doesn't mean he, that he's always right. He could be wrong. Now think about this. Doesn't Satan, his tendency is, if there's a doctrine that you're open-hearted to and you're accepting and you even accept wholeheartedly, couldn't Satan use that doctrine to abuse it in a way to twist you and guide you to a wrong direction? It does. So what I decided to do now is that I don't want to give attention to these people. A lot of them are actually losers because what they want to do is just critique Bible believers because they hit the age of 60 and they're grumpy. They're stuck at home. They turn white in the skin. They got nothing to do except criticizing Gene Kim, Gene Kim and other Bible believers. So I don't have time to waste with those guys, you know. So I've been keeping my mouth shut for three years. And me, it's really easy to crush these people. But I don't want to look like a circus monkey because these guys, what's evidence and proof that these guys are truly loser trolls is that they're going to post video after video after video after video against me or certain Bible believers endlessly. That's their whole channel. Now, some of them might give the excuse, well, I'm trying to expose wrong doctrine. Okay, but in my church, I don't talk to you all the stinking time about one false prophet, Todd Friel, Todd Friel, Ray Comfort, Ray Comfort. I don't do Ray Comfort like scores and scores of videos dedicated to just one person because then that shows an obsession toward a person. A ministry is dedicated to helping out people, souls, not picking which doctrine that you think is important and then you harp on that all day long. It shows an, a strange obsession you have toward a person, not helping a soul. Because if you have a true desire to help souls, it's not just going to be that one particular wrong doctrine. You're going to help that person grow and do soul winning, get them involved in church. And especially if your online is only critiquing people, you're not trying to expose wrong doctrine. Because when you're trying to expose wrong doctrine, it's not only going to be just critiquing. What you're also going to do, a ministry is about supporting people helping them, getting them to soul in, but these people don't soul in. These people don't know what it's like to fellowship with brethren in a church and help out people in a church. All they want to do is stay online and critique Bible believers because they want to look like they're the ones that are right, but then Jack Chick is wrong, Peter Ruckman is wrong, and then all these other Bible believers are wrong. They go to Hoffman, they go to all these other kinds of people. Davis, you know, we have him in England passing out tracts, you know, great blessing that person is. And they go attack like other people, Charles Lawson, a lot of other people. Now, I don't associate myself with all these people, but I am not a loser where I just harp on one person and I'm going to try to expose you something wrong with Charles Lawson. Isn't that weird? Amen. Isn't that weird? Because there are bigger heretics to fry. And I'm not saying Lawson's a heretic or these other people are heretics. What I'm pointing out is this. These people have a genuine love and they believe in dispensationalism, the King James Bible. They're trying to help out a church and they rescued a lot of souls out there and helped a lot of people. And your ministry is to expose these preachers. There's something wrong with you. Okay, so because of that, now I'm going to have to stomp on you. So I have no respect for you guys. Now... There's a doctrine which we believe in in dispensationalism called dispensational salvations. Now, what is that? Now, a lot of people who converted to dispensationalism online, what's understandable is that they say that because of our videos on dispensations, particularly on the issue of salvation, that helped them. 
Now, I don't know how many of you, but how many of you also, what has been most helpful for you in dispensationalism was concerning the salvation issue, right? So then this has been a lot of people online and for some of you as well concerning this. Now, there's this group that wants to attack this. So what they're going to do is this. This group, what they want to do is that they're going to use the name dispensation so that they can call themselves dispensationalists, but then they're going to focus on attacking this. That's what they're going to do. Now, let me try to briefly explain. Uh, how many minutes do I have? All right. Okay, thank you so much. All right, then. So let me uh, go through this, and it looks like it's not going to be a short video, but I'll do as best as I can. Okay, the first thing is this. The first thing is that what these guys are going to try to do, which I covered to you in our previous teaching, is concerning the history, concerning progressive revelation. Okay, what is progressive revelation? So basically what we believe is that dispensationalism is that it's not like that we get all the doctrines at once and it carried on for the past 2,000 years. That's not how it works. Because you had a lot of corruption from the Catholic Church and Dark Ages and they didn't even have the Bible or the freedom to study the Bible for themselves, right? So because of that, that's why when they started to study the Bible, their knowledge grew, right? That's what we believe in. Now, these people, they're going to claim that certain dispensationalists like Larkin, Schofield, and others, that they did not teach dispensational salvations. But then all of a sudden, here comes Ruckman, who teaches dispensational salvations. Now, I came from Ruckman School. So what they want to do is that they want to align me with this person, and they want to turn this into some kind of weird little cultic fringe. But you got to realize this. One thing that they've got to understand is then you get rid of the def definition of progressive revelation. Just because you point out Larkin and Schofield did not teach it, then that means we should get rid of the term progressive revelation. The point of progressive revelation is as you study the Bible more and more and more, you're going to find something new that another person before you did not teach when you study that Bible more and more. Now, if that never happened to you in your individual life where you were studying the Bible, and didn't you find gleanings, some new gleanings that you're like, wow, I never saw it that way before? That's natural. Yeah. That's natural. So Dr. Ruckman, he discovered this. So to say that, no, this is not progressive revelation with Ruckman, because what he did was totally off guard from what Larkin Schofield taught, then what you're saying is you're getting rid of the definition of progressive revelation. See? Of course it's not progressive revelation then. You know why? Because what progressive revelation means is that you're discovering something more and more. That's what it is. So that is a fallacious argument which is easily debunked. Now, another thing is this, is that some get mad at me for teaching that Dr. Upman is in this line of dispensationalism where I put him with Larkin and Schofield and other classical dispensationalists. That's what I do. So a lot of people, they'll get upset at me concerning that one. Now, my easy answer to this one is, what you got to understand is this. If you want to insist, if you want to insist that he has to be within this camp with Larkin, Schofield, and let's put Darby, then you know what you're saying? Then you're saying dispensationalism started with Darby. Do you know why? Because if you're going to force him to hear, then you, what, you know what you got to do? You got to start it with Darby. That's right. Then you're saying that dispensationalism is a cult started by Darby yep. in the 1800s. That's what you're teaching. Because do you know why? Everybody differ from each other all the way from the beginning of church history. What, it is an undoubtable, irrefutable fact when you look at the beginning of church history to now that there were people who took up pieces of dispensationalism. And then people were adding things more and more and more and more and more. That's why I consider Ruckman to be within this same line. Why? Because dispensationalism is not all within just one bunch you go with Darby, and then Larkin Schofield. That's it. That's not how it works. Dispensationalism, rightly dividing, is something that is started scripturally from the Bible. 
And then more and more people study the Bible, more and more and more. So dispensationalism, the camp you should be in line in, is within the scriptural camp. That's what it is. It's not picking which camp you want. Then if you pick a camp, then you're saying that then you got a cult there at the beginning. That's the idea. Now, another thing is this, is that some of them want to say this. Well, no, classical dispensationalism was all about premillennialism and the distinction of Israel and the church. So basically, they're picking two doctrines. So that's why they're going to say, so we're not saying it started with Darby. No, classical dispensationalism was all the way at the beginning because it was all about premillennialism and the distinction of Israel and the church. Ah, then you know what they did? What these people did is that they started to pick and choose which doctrine would qualify as genuine, real dispensationalism. I thought that the doctrines that we should find is in the word of God on what it should divine is real, genuine dispensationalism. So it, is, it makes more logical sense to say this method right here. They were trying to go by the Bible, and then they found pieces and started to add more and more and more, and then we reached up to here. But here's something. We don't believe it ended with Ruckman. Now you got a lot of people coming out. So then we had, well, Estep and Lentz was at the time of Ruckman. They're gone. So then you got like David Walker with his book. And then you also got a lot of other dispensationalists. And then you got Peacock with his school. And then you got Gip with his school. And then you got all the other Bible believers. You can just look at our resources link with all the hundreds of thousands of Bible believers around the world in our resources link. We give you missionaries and churches. I mean, this is the camp. We find more and more things. We don't end it off like here. We study more. That's the idea.